Hi everyone, welcome to Stardust Gold Crochet. My name is Tasha. Welcome to the Nordic Vines Crochet Along for square number four of the Nordic Vines Winter Afghan Cow, hosted by Juniper and Oaks. And this is my square. I designed it with a 5.5 millimeter hook and I used Swish yarn, which is a worsted weight yarn, and this yarn was donated by We Crochet, which is so awesome. Thank you so much, We Crochet. And I'll put links to the crochet along and this yarn down in the description below. All of the squares are created using C2C, which is corner to corner, half double crochet. If you aren't familiar with C2C, I have a C2C basics video that will help you work through this pattern. Um, I also wanted to go over how to fix a few of the issues that happens with C2C. As you can see here, one half is solid, the other half isn't, so we're going to work through that. For the C2C basics video, you can go ahead and link in the description below or click here where the little eye is. That'll help you um, get straight to that video. There's also links for the C2C blanket size calculator below. Here is my design. It looks great on paper. I thought this is beautiful. And once I started actually crocheting it, um, <laughs> things changed slightly and I'll show you why. As you can see, it all looks pretty even. But when I was doing C2C, it kind of changed on me. This line became a solid line and then the, the same line going up in the other direction became actually not so solid. So the um, spaces between the leaves, you can't really tell, they kind of blended together so it looked like one big kind of blob. And I didn't really like that. I don't like the way that looks. So I wanted to make it look more solid. I filled in the blanks, so to speak. When you're going down this way, they're gonna look separated. When you do it this way, it's all in one straight line and it's all together. For these particular sections, there's nine of them. Um, heading up in that direction on both sides. I went ahead and took a long piece of yarn and just used that one long piece of yarn with these nine squares. And then when it was finished, I weaved in some of the tails, but I left in some long tails so that I could actually crochet together and make it look solid. We're going to sew and actually do some needlework to make it look solid like this line here. I'll grab a piece of yarn and then we'll get started and I'll show you how how I did it to make it look more solid. I did it right here. You see this is what it looked like originally and this is what it looks like after I did a little bit of stitch work. So you can take your long tail and just sew it over that to separate out the leaf pattern. I'm not using a blunt ended needle because I want to make sure that it's, it's going to be a blanket and we want to make sure that it gets really um, secure. So basically what you're going to do is weave the yarn over the red and then back and forth and just try to make it a solid line um, as best you can and I just kind of go back and forth. Weeble wobbles all in and out. And I go back through, take the same piece of yarn to go back up around the stitches and then back up around the other side of the leaf pattern. So it just kind of makes it a little more definitive and gives you a little better leaf pattern there. I just, you don't have to do this like I was saying. Um, the end of the, towards the end of the video, I'm going to go through how to um, decrease. And I'll also have tips on how to carry the yarn at the end of the video, or kind of closer to the end of the video. But here you can see how it creates this awesome definitive pattern for the leaf all around it. It's white. I really don't like these little pieces that hang over. So I went ahead and did the same thing and stitched those up um, and kind of brought them up and away from the red just to give it a little more definition but again you don't have to do this you can leave that the way it is and just keep the pattern um, as is but I really like the way this looks so it just takes a little bit of extra sti stitch work if you're up if you're up for that as you can see I'm going under the white yarn and then just pulling up that little corner 
going back through the top and just kind of pulling it up a little bit. And then of course weaving your tails in like normal back and forth and up and down because that's what keeps it secure. <laughs> and that's how it looks at the end. I really love the way it looks. You can see that it kind of matches the pattern a lot better. And this side over here kind of does the same thing, but you can see how it looks just like a blob without going through and doing the stitches. So here, let's do the tips for carrying your yarn in the C2C. This is going to be pretty simple, but this is the longest part of the video. I use these bobbins to help separate out my yarn. I clip them because it makes it so easy, they don't fall, and when you actually turn your project, it makes it so much easier to keep track of all your yarn, and it just takes a little bit of extra time. This one here, so I just did my three, or I'm about to finish my three, and then I'm going to do a white one, a red one, and a white one. So let's do that. I'm going to pull out this stitch and I will show you guys how I do my this and I have one more to do. We're doing this cowl in half double crochet so you yarn over first, insert your hook and then yarn over and pull through all three. And we're doing it three half double crochets per stitch with two chains in between. So now my next stitch is going to be a white stitch. So I have this yarn that's here that's from that previous row. Um, I'm going to carry that down to this stitch here that I'm about to work into. So the way I do that is this is still here. I put my yarn, my hook through but first, since I'm going, since my next stitch, let's see what the next one is. It's always good to see what the next one is. So I've got a white one, a red one, and a white one. I do need to carry that red yarn underneath the white um, to get back so that I don't have to start a whole new thread. To carry, you want to bring your yarn, your working yarn, to the front. And then you want to make sure that this piece is over your hook when you put it through there. So you want to put that over your hook, then insert your hook into the chain space. Grab your new yarn, the one that you're working from, the one that you're carrying down. And this gets a little tricky, but you're going to just kind of hook it over and gently pull it through all of that and pull it through. Make sure you pull this tight. Then you don't want this white yarn to be too tight, so you're going to pull it out just a tad. You also don't want it to be too loose. It's kind of a guessing game, but you do want this red one to be tight around all of that. Into, then we're going to have everything, and we're going to work around all of these strands. We're going to do a yarn over, put through, and we want to make sure we get all of them in there. I can't remember if I chained two. Yes, I did. <laughs> and then you want to go ahead and pull this red tight as best you can to kind of get that little piece down there. And then you're going to work three half double crochets. So there we have it. And we're going to carry this white yarn up. So I'm going to drop the red. Actually, we're going to carry the white yarn and use the red. So you want to do the same thing you did before. Make sure that your white yarn is on the inside, then wrap it around your hook, then insert your hook into the, your stitch that you're going, your next stitch. Make sure you have your other white yarn on top of your hook as well. And then you're going to pull the red through all of them. And then make sure you pull that tight. So if you want me to do that again, let's do that again. So I'm going to pull this out and maybe get a little bit closer. So I'm going to finish this last stitch. 
and then we're going to work on to the next stitch but we want to make sure that our white comes down first because we're going to carry it we're going to pull that again just to make sure we're going to do a red stitch next so you want this you want this one and you want this one all to be bunched up together and under over your hook so i'm going to put the white over my hook insert and then make sure that that white back there is also on top of my hook yarn over and pull through everything on your hook and then pull that white tight then we're going to do our red stitch so we're going to chain two and do three half double crochets one two and three so you can see the back side you're carrying the white i'm going to pull it just to make sure it's real tight again and now we're going to switch back to white so the red we're finished with for this row so we're just going to put it forward pull the white and we're going to finish our last stitch using white oops one thing about this yarn it is a tad splitty but it is still great to work with and also I use a Susan Bates hook so my Bates hook is uh, sometimes can split yarn so I'm going to do three half double crochets and then of course you want to pull that one tight too they always loosen up but when you end up um, you always want to tighten them before you the next stitch close out the row with a slip stitch and here is how we end up turning and doing our decreases okay so I'm going to turn it I'm going to turn it and then we're going to do a slip stitch slip stitch slip stitch and a slip stitch into the chain so we're doing three slip stitches across one two three and then we're slip stitching into the chain and pulling through and then the, we're going to start the next row working down so i'm going to grab my sheet and mark off the ones i've already done and now i'm starting here so we're going to do one white two white one red one white so first we're going to do two white then a red then a white. have red that's basically right here on the second stitch so we're going to need to carry that down one more um, but first we're going to do a white stitch which is this white border chain two and work our white stitch through both the red and have it on top of your hook and you'll see on this side how what it looks like when you pull it through So two white, one red, white. Want to make sure that that's on top of there. You don't have to carry it. You can always cut it if you want, but it ends up creating a lot of tails, which can be very cumbersome when you get towards the end of your project to weave them all in. So I always pull it tight after I finish the stitch. And now, I'm going to bring the red forward and we're going to use red again so I'm going to carry that as well the rule of thumb for carrying is don't carry more than three squares because then it ends up just looking really funny so I'm going to pick up the white make sure my hook is underneath the red pull that tight And then do our half double crochets, two, three, and then pull that tight again, always. So now we're not going to use this white for a minute. So, oops, I just twisted it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull it tight and then clip it onto my project and get it out of the way. And now we're just going to work strictly with red and do pink, two. Two red and then it goes back to white. 
that I have this other white here that I've basically allotted for the white section here. So that's going to pick up right there. So I'll be able to pick that up after I work these two. So I don't have to carry one again. And you can apply these to the entire square, these techniques. Um, everybody knows basically how to increase. It seems like decreasing is the most confusing part of the C2C. So there, I've done two. And now I have my white here, so I'm just going to pull that white up. I don't need this red anymore. Well, do I? Let's see if I need it. Um, so I've got two red, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, don't need it again. So I'm going to keep it over here and just use the white, the rest of it. And I'm going to actually cut this yarn because this red piece I don't need anymore. So we can get rid of that. And that's it for the row. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial video. We went over decreasing, changing colors, using bobbins, and also learning how to touch it up by sewing in ends and also making the leaf pattern just look a whole lot better. Thank you guys so much. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Check out all the links in the description below. They'll have a links to the blog and also to the patterns and to Juniper and Oaks as well. I'm so grateful to be a part of this crochet along. And I'm really grateful for our sponsor, We Crochet, for giving us this beautiful yarn. It's so soft, and I think you guys will really love it. The yarn links are also going to be below, and you can get this yarn um, from We Crochet, and it's called Swish. Thank you, We Crochet. Really appreciate you guys. Happy crocheting!